Hello and welcome to What Are You Saying? Hashtag Ways, where we talk about topics in the news as it affects us all. I am Uti Elu and today I'm joined by none and other, super amazing, Miss <laughs> Diola. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good, good. Good to see you. Yeah. And we're also joined online by the beautiful Noma Efanga. Hi, Noma. Hi, Uti. Hi, Diola. Hi. How are you all doing? Good, thank you. Very well, thank you. How are you? Happy, happy new month. Yes, thank I know, you. right? Happy thank Workers' you. Day. I don't know if you really want to know the answer to that question, but well, you know, <laughs> I'll tell you when we're done. You know, we, like I like to say, we have a saying on ways that mm -hmm. we're, we're glad and we're happy that mm -hmm. we don't look how we feel. So yeah. I know, I know, I know what it can be like. I know mm -hmm. what the days can feel like. Um, even though this was supposed to be a long weekend, it was, yeah. today was supposed to be a public holiday. It doesn't feel like it. it. Like I'm literally you. struggling to keep my eyes open. So <laughs> well, it should make for an Thank you. <laughs> 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 it should make for a very interesting week to try and find yeah. some ways to sneak some extra sleep in and yeah. just, you know, recalibrate yourself. But you come into the long weekend thinking, oh, this is going to be great. This is going to be fantastic. Wow. And then all of a sudden they flash. It's, it just it's passes like, in the blink oh, of an eye. Oh, it's Tuesday tomorrow. Yeah. There's work. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, <laughs> we've had... I think it's back to back, right? Last yeah. Monday was last, a public yes, holiday. Yes, well, so yes. this is, I think this is the last one for a while now. Mm, yes. uh -huh. So till yes. June 12th, I think is the next one. Yes, yes. So yes, for, yes. for us workers, we're, we're counting down. <laughs> um, I'm ex I, I haven't been on the show on a Monday in a long, long very time. Long time. Yeah, very, so, very long time. Very, very long time. So it's going to be a new experience mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. um, today is what we like to call, or what I like to call on ways, Governance Mondays. Yeah. So we yeah. take our time to try and. Um, educate our viewers and mm. you know the general populace about the important things surrounding Nigeria, surrounding mm. our governance, surrounding our political system, um, and really just getting people up to speed on what you should know as a gainful member of the Office of a Citizen of Nigeria. Absolutely. So today, right, um, population and housing census is the official and complete count of all persons and housing units in a country at a specified time. The National Population Commission planned to conduct another census 17 years after the 2006 census. The census previously scheduled for May 3rd to 7th um, of this year, 2023, has been postponed and in partnering with EIE Nigeria, we would discuss the reasons why the census should be postponed. Mm. So interesting. Okay, so I mean, here um, we have um, lack of um, proper awareness mm -hmm. and publicity, and um, this is very true because I mean, citizens have they've not really been fully, you know, informed mm. on the various census activities, Absolutely. such as whether or not there will be a public holiday, yep. I mean, with less than a week to the census, how the National Population Council intends to use personal digital assistant technology to collect data mm. and then of course other FAQs the census questions that yeah. people G may given the last yeah. experience with the election you mm. can understand why technology Ooh, is important to know yeah. How it yeah 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 mm -hmm. then um, there is also the financial concerns you know mm -hmm. um, in accordance with the freedom of information act of 2011 and in the spirit of transparency and accountability the NPC should provide breakdown of the 18 or of the 896 billion, you know, for the census, you know, mm -hmm. that was budgeted for the census, amount released, utilized, and cash back, mm -hmm. a published breakdown of the amounts disbursed to the 774 local governments mm -hmm. and the 36 states plus the FCT for the census. Mm -hmm. Very important there yeah. for, for a measure yeah. of accountability yeah. because there's, there's a huge trust oh, issue yeah. Um, yeah. that we have. So that would really go a long way to getting people um, to see that there's a measure of accountability yeah. there. Norma, do you have something to add for us? Oh, yeah, briefly. I mean, just talking about it, I was having this conversation with my husband and he was he kept asking, "Is I'm hearing that there's going to be a census. Is there really going to be census? Mm. And it's funny how there's going to be something as huge as a national census and a majority of the people who are going to be numbered in this uh, 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 exercise have no idea that this is going to take place. Yeah. It, it was just uh, another you know, let down of, of our government and our system, how we do things in Nigeria. Mm. How do people not, uh, uh, how, are, how is it that people are not aware 
that such an exercise, huge exercise is going to take place. But I'll take it up from where uh, Diala stopped, and that's on the re reliability of the personal digital assistants as a PDAs to collect the data. Now, people are going to be concerned, even because you're using uh, uh, tools, you know, technology, and um, with hindsight from the experience uh, during the elections with the malfunction of the IWEF, people, it still boils down to trust issues. People are still distrusting of the system in Nigeria because they're telling them, oh, we're doing this and we're doing that. And you're not really giving them the information that informs them and, uh, informs them and helps them to, to make those decisions, you know, decisive choices for them and their families or people that they're responsible for. Oh. So the postponement, I mean, go figure, it's a no-brainer there. Mm -hmm. How do you do something and you are not sensitizing the people gradually? This is something that sensitization should have started since last year, telling people, oh, this exercise is going to take place mm -hmm. at Susode to, uh, to enlighten people and let them know what the expectations are. Mm -hmm. So these and other unresolved issues are what, what are leading to this uh, postponement of the census and um, I mean it's it's I, 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 I'm, I'm short of saying that it's disgraceful that we keep showing up unprepared in sit uh, to, to 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 the international front mm. every time it just seems like these people do not have their acts together and um, they're not serious it's just very unfortunate with the government that we are seeing today. Mm. I mean, I'm glad for one that at least they've postponed it. I mean, they could have just gone ahead yeah. to say, you know what, um, we're just, gonna we're go just going to go ahead and do it. So I'm glad that it was postponed. Mm. Um, it at least shows that there's a measure of, of thought behind it mm. and planning. And, and to be fair, a census is a huge exercise. Okay. There are lots of moving parts. Um, I think this, this is the second time the date will be moved. I think the first time it was moved, it was moved because of the election. Yeah. Um, and it's been moved again. Uh, so to me, uh, that sort of says to me that look, people are really thinking through what needs to be done done. Um, but definitely on the side of sensitization, so many people didn't know about the census. I remember mm. asking um, in terms of continuity, you know, at work to say, okay, what's happening? And you know, some people were like, oh, there's a census. Some people say, oh, I'm not sure. Some people are like, oh, there's a census. Mm. So the, the awareness and the fact that, you know, to actually have a successful count, you need to restrict movement yeah, sometimes. Yeah. You know, you need people to be where they're supposed to be to be able mm, to count mm, them. So mm. a lot of work that's, uh, um, that still needs to be done. Of course, this information is being brought to you by the Office of the Citizen um, with the Enough is Enough Nigeria initiative. So um, we would also like you to learn more and there's a great way that you can do that. You can um, chat with the Office of the Citizen chatbot um, who is your new assistant on civic engagement and can give you basic information about who your elected officials are and so much more. So if you want to learn more, um, please chat hello via WhatsApp to 01700 I'll take that number again. It's 01700 and just send hello and you'll be able to chat and get as much information as you want. Mm. So that's quite an interesting conversation yeah. on the census, but on with the show. So here's what we found as today's quote. Ethics is not definable, it's not implementable because it is not conscious. It involves not only thinking, but also our feeling. And that's by Valdemar W. Setzer. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that quote? What do you think about ethics? What are, let me say, what are your personal ethics? Ah. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's a bit of um, a... You know, I've been mulling on it mm. because, I mean, morals are, you know, different from yeah. ethics. So um, I, I would say, what are my morals? Mm -hmm. You know, more like, mm -hmm. you know, um, well, integrity, you know, discipline, mm. um, empathy, you know, these are things that, um, you know, from the core of who I am. But again, ethics in, in the sense that it must be a collective, you know, a mm -hmm. collective and a collective rule such that guides, mm -hmm. you know, people. And I don't know. I think for me, I just tend to, you know, agree with what is good. But again, I've come to realize that sometimes what is good may not necessarily be right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so Absolutely. I just um, 
I put it in context and mm. then, you know, de decide, okay, it'll, if I want to be good or I want to be right. <laughs> <laughs> that is you always know. a very, very yeah. valid battle. Y yeah. <laughs> Noah, what do you have to say about um, ethics? What's your, what are your ethics like and your values? You know, um, Uti, just listening, I just uh, remembered an incident that happened during the week. Uh, mm -hmm. Someone want, asked someone to do something and uh, it was supposed to be a favor. And then the person agrees. And then the person who asked someone to do something just ladens this person with so much. And I'm asking myself, why is it that several times, I mean, if I was having this conversation with Uwa, she would probably say, her, Madam, consideration. I said, but that's the truth. I think it starts from we as individuals knowing what, when we feel, and I, I'm taking it from that part of the quote where it says, it's not just about thinking, but it's also our feeling. There are things that happen to us and we don't like, but how is it so okay for it to happen to somebody else and it's okay? So it's about consideration, putting ourselves in the shoes of others. And a lot of times when you put yourself in a position, it actually enables you to feel what somebody else is likely to feel. And when you have a bad feeling about it, then you definitely know in Della's words that it's not right. Exactly. So it's, it's just about being considerate for me. And that's a core a value. That's a core work ethic for me, that in everything that you're doing, that there's a level, high level of consideration for others, because it might just be you feeling in to that shoe at that particular time. And then other things like integrity, like honesty, work ethic is about you being able to be guided by principles that help and enable to uh, enable people to, to achieve great results, mm. right? Mm. Doing things right. So objectivity, being impartial, being able to do your job the way that it's supposed to be done and not because you know this person or you know that person because nobody's above the law. So situations like that, uh, having compassion, uh, uh, putting, uh, be, being understanding and all of that, those are just a few of them that guide your actions so that when you are doing things, you are seen to be fair, you're seen to be equitable, you're seen to be impartial. Mm -hmm. And those are things that I find very, very uh, grossly lacking in today's uh, um, experience. And I just want to cap it as humanity. Mm -hmm. We are losing our humanity mm -hmm. in our governance, in work ethics. I mean, there are just rules and regulations that are there, but are people really feeling these things are knowing that these are the right things to do because we're human beings who have feelings and who know that things need to be done right. Mm. Okay, I think Norma has just said it all. Ethical behavior, I, I mean, this is, these are university classes where yeah. people sit down and debate it. It just goes to show that there's no clean, yeah. clear cut yeah. definition for ethics. Mm. It's very uh, subjective, it's mm. very personal, um, and it's subject to quite a lot of interpretation. Mm. So, public service values or civil service values are those values and ethics that should be followed while carrying out public duties. Values such as integrity, honesty, objectivity, non-partisanship, impartiality, empathy, compassion, and conflict of interest. Today, Kunle Lawal is here to discuss the topic governance and the work ethics of a Nigerian civil servant. But first, let's take a break to see what we found in the news. Stay with us. You're still watching Waze, International Workers' Day, also known as Labor Day in some countries, and often referred to as May Day, is a celebration of laborers and the working classes um, that is promoted by the international labor um, movement and occurs every 1st of May and um, all first Monday in May. So... Um, I think we've already talked about how we feel about Workers' Day. So um, I think all that's left for us to say is happy Workers' Day to all the workers out there. <laughs> happy Workers' Day. So, Norma, what did you find for us in the news? Okay, so in the spirit of uh, May Day, uh, I have this from the president of Cannes. 
it says uh, prioritize prioritize workers' welfare. Mm -hmm. He urges can um, or can urges federal government and employers. So the president of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Archbishop Daniel Oko, has called on the government and employers to ensure that workers are treated with dignity and respect and also to provide them with favorable work conditions. So he is, you know, calling on the goal, he's using this uh, opportunity of the celebration of the uh, Workers' Day to remind the Nigerian government of their responsibility towards the workers in the growth and development of the nation. He said uh, a statement, he made a statement that we commend the resilience, dedication and hard work of Nigerian workers who have continued to drive the economy forward despite the numerous challenges facing the na nation. And we recognize the sacrifices uh, they make daily to ensure that their families and the nation at large have a better future. And he's also urging the federal government as long as, as along with employers of labor to look into decent working conditions, fair wages, and job security to continue to treat workers with dignity and respect. So, yeah, basically still giving, uh, lauding some of the concerns that people have uh, working in Nigeria, the conditions, the situation yeah. of insecurity, and the different challenges that the, uh, the nation has faced uh, currently, yeah, there is and asking lot, the government to, to pay it. attention. Yeah. Thank you, Noma. Um, Adela, what did you find for us? Okay, so um, organized labor seeks review of retirement age for public servants. Okay. Um, so today in, um, I mean, in attendance, um, um, lead, well, past and present leaders of the Nigerian Labor Congress, you know, gathered in Abuja today, well, in commemoration of the International Workers' Day. And um, it was said that, um, well, they're looking at um, retirement age for public civil servants to be 60 to 65 or, or 35 years of active service to 40 years of um, service. Mm -hmm. And um, that's um, quite... Okay. Um, so people in, get to work in, uh, <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so I'll take my story very quickly. So uh, the headline says, we're not phasing out redesigned Naira notes. And that's by the CBN. So of course, mm -hmm. if you've been online um, anywhere in, in the last couple of uh, days, there's been reports of uh, the uh, apparent or proposed phasing out of the new notes due to scarcity. So today the CBN has come out to debunk that, um, to say that it has no plans to phase out the newly redesigned 1,500 and 200 Naira notes. And this feedback came from the acting director of corporate communications for the bank, Dr. Issa Abdul Mumin, um, who reported it or described it as fake news. Mm -hmm. So um, he's basically stating emphatically that this is unfounded and reiterating that they are circulating side by side with the old notes and will continue to do so until the December 31st um, deadline of this year when the old notes. Uh, will eventually be phased out. So That's just so we know news. that. I mean, yes, because I, I mean, I saw that. I mean, it did sound like fake news to me, yeah. but I thought, you know, you never know. You, you just, just have to be sure. Exactly, so great that they exactly. came out to address yeah. that yeah. very, very quickly. quickly. Yeah. So um, please stay with us. We'll take a quick break now. Uh, and then when we come back, we'll go on with the show. <laughs> 